Investing in the wrong area can really hinder your property investing journey. It might mean that you tie up more cash and more equity in the first project and therefore struggle to go on to the next property and the next property as a part of that momentum investing. It also might mean that you struggle to get the right return on investment because the money you put in isn't paying off over a certain period of time. Whereas if you do your research and understand where are those best areas to get a buy to let property in 2021, then you can really set yourself up for long term and wealth and growth in the property market. The market has definitely been somewhat crazy in 2020 and I think to be fair 2021 will probably be somewhere similar but some areas will still do really well in the grand scheme of things and it's all about understanding what are those areas, where are they and what potential do they have to keep on increasing in value. The reality is nobody truly knows what is going to happen to the property market. This is all unknown uncharted territory and everyone on YouTube who does a 2021 property video it is all prediction and opinion just like mine in this video. However, in this video we're going to dive into real data and real facts to understand where are and where could those places be in 2021 that will give you a good solid return on investment and growth in capital appreciation. I've chosen five areas in this video but it doesn't mean that these five areas are the only great places in the UK. The reality is you could probably invest anywhere in the country as long as you do your research, buy at the right price and you know and understand your numbers on each potential property deal. But before we jump into the best areas to invest in 2021, it's important to look at what's happening in the market right now. Throughout January, I've been viewing properties left, right and centre back in my hometown up in South Yorkshire and it's been great and I've seen a lot of good deals, but I've also seen most of those properties and deals go for well above what they're worth. At the moment, the market is really, really hot and there's still a lot of demand versus not a lot of supply and therefore that's going to push prices up. It's definitely a seller's market rather than a buyer's market. And the unfortunate truth is I'm seeing this across Instagram and YouTube and other property investors that I'm speaking to as well. They're experiencing something very similar where they're seeing great, fantastic deals sell for way more than what they're actually worth, therefore making it a terrible deal. So let's take a look at what Zoopla have said about the property market in January 2021 so far compared to this time last year. So what they're saying on this graph here is that supply is 12% lower than what it was this time last year. But then to make things worse and more difficult, the actual demand on the market is almost 13% higher as well. So you have this kind of double trouble graph here and that explains why it's really difficult in the market at the moment because you have all these extra buyers wanting to buy fewer homes therefore that's pushing up the prices so there's a bit of waiting this year and we might see some changes after the stamp duty tax break ends in March and hopefully things cool off a little bit, but it's definitely tricky to find a good deal at the moment. I've definitely seen a lot of deals, be that with estate agents or also auction properties where when I've run all of the sums and worked in the bridging finance and all the costs, I'm then seeing that potential property sell for what is the break even point. So if I then bought that property at that price that it was selling for, it would basically mean that by the time I've done the refurb and factored in all of the costs, I would actually make zero profit. I wouldn't make a loss, but I also wouldn't make a profit either. So those deals aren't really worth it unless you're more than happy to tie up all of your savings in cash and therefore have to start all over again to then save up for the next property. So you can't recycle cash out of those deals. There was an example property I was looking at. It was the perfect deal, really nice kind of doer upper type property and needed just an interior refurb and a kind of tart up of the property. There's nothing structural on the outside. I got a quote from a local builder and he said between 12 to 20K refurb, which is what I roughly costed him. It was worth about 60 to 70,000 pounds as a guide price at the auction. I personally thought it was worth about 60. I could have pushed to 65 as my upper limit. And it actually turned out that property sold for £92,500. Bearing in mind that in that particular area, no other property has ever sold for more than £100,000. And that is completely done up. And this property was in a really bad state. So imagine buying a property at £92,000, spending 20 k doing it up, plus then all of your costs, your legal fees, stamp duty if it's a second home or an investment property you basically made a massive loss. So I don't know whether that was an owner occupier who won the bid on the property or whether it's an investor. If it's an investor, they really did their numbers wrong because they will have lost a lot of money on that. And that property sold for way more than what it was worth. But a good investor always trusts their numbers and makes sure that they don't just bid or buy blindly, not really understanding how much the true cost of a property should be. It's frustrating not being able to jump into the industry and work on project number one, but I'm just sitting and waiting for the right deal to come along because that will be more worth it than jumping into a property now that's going to make a loss rather than waiting 
one or two months to find a better deal that will make a profit. So now we've looked at the current market and what's happening, let's look at where I think are going to be the best places for capital appreciation and property price increases in 2021. I've chosen five key and great areas in the UK and to be fair, Things haven't really changed much since last year. The property market isn't drastically changing at the moment. So some of these might not be a surprise to the more seasoned investors watching this video. And if you haven't already signed up to HomeTrack, they do fantastic monthly reports where they give you the real facts and data of the property market every single month. And it really goes beyond the headlines because you don't want to be looking at news articles to really understand where the property is going because news articles and news outlets sell headlines not facts. And when you look at home track and what's happened over the past 12 months, you can see that Bolton is a real winner over the past year. Bolton is currently up 7.5% year on year, which is incredible, but also not surprising because Bolton is on the outskirts of Manchester, it's part of Greater Manchester, and Manchester as a city is going through a huge boom at the moment. They even did a four, five, six part documentary on it on the BBC this year. Rochdale is another great place, again up 6.5%, and Rochdale is still a part of Greater Manchester, so again, not too surprising there. Liverpool is definitely championing the way with 6.3% up year on year, and I think Liverpool's going to do really well over the next few months and it's something in an area to watch. Another two great places, Wakefield and Barnsley, again up around 6% year on year and that's closer to my neck of the woods, those places are doing quite well. But then you look towards the bottom of the list and interestingly you see towns and cities like Cambridge that are only up 1.5%, London is around 1% year on year because you have these very expensive areas that are now kind of stalling a little bit in the market after they've had loads of growth, whereas previously it's the northern towns and cities that have had a bit of a stalling growth and now they're they're going up and it's all a typical property market cycle that's happening here but at the moment now is the time to be looking up north at these cheaper properties especially in towns where you can get a good semi-detached or terrace house still for under a hundred thousand pound which is pretty much impossible in the south. As well as the data, you should be looking at some of the context around each city as well. So with the five that I've chosen, I've also looked at things like massive regeneration projects, transport infrastructure, investment that's being made into those cities, and really just what does it have going for it? Are there major employers that are moving into the city? Is it slowly declining? Is the population increasing or decreasing? And all of these have played a factor into the top five. Okay, so the first place is Nottingham. It's 5.8% up year on year, and it's also 32 percent above the 2007 peak. So that was just before the crash of 2008 and therefore it's already recovered and it's above what it was previously at a new all-time high. Now Nottingham has been going through a fantastic piece of regeneration over the past few years. It's always been in the middle and slowly climbing up to the top of the rankings in terms of year-on-year -year growth. It has a lot going for it. There are loads of great employers there, there's a lot of money in the area. It's a growing, thriving city with lots of bars, lots of restaurants, lots of new employers there. But you also have this great mixture of city living and and only being 10-15 minutes away from the countryside and countryside living. So there's a real different plethora of houses that you can buy depending on what your finances are and your situation is. There are also massive regeneration projects like one in Beeston, which is called Beeston Square, where they're investing over 50 million pounds into a brand new cinema, theatre, restaurant complex, and also 132 brand new homes in the area. And it's things like that that are really gonna start driving more people to that particular area. More recently, planning permission has just been granted for the first phase of Nottingham's 650 million pound regeneration project called the Island Quarter. Now that is really exciting and it's gonna really, really boost the property prices in that area. Nottingham can be great for families, but also perfect for HMOs as well. You have a mixture of lots of family areas. You've got two fantastic thriving universities Universities and you've got a big mixture of students and young working professionals, meaning lots of different property strategies could work really well in Nottingham and the surrounding area. And then lastly, one thing to think about is transport. It's right next to the M1 motorway, giving you access all the way down to London versus all the way up north into Scotland. You also have trains that go to Manchester, Sheffield, Derby, York, Leeds and London, all within an hour or two. And when you think about a post-COVID world, actually having a one hour and 40 minute train to London might not be a bad thing if you're only going there once or maybe twice maximum every single week which makes Nottingham a really great place to live and work even if you have a job in London. And the second place that I think is gonna do really well is Manchester. It has a 6% year on year growth. It's already doing really well. It's already had a massive boom and I think there's still a lot more to go. 
It's also 28% above the 2007 peak, so it's above the old baseline before the crash. Manchester as a city is really powering the north. It used to be massive from an industrial perspective back in the day, and it's now a huge media, TV, and digital hub, and it's a thriving, thriving part of the country. There are loads of people who are migrating out of London and moving to Manchester. It's a fantastic place. It's also a lot less built up than London, so you have this mixture of beautiful Victorian houses that are only 15 minutes away from Manchester city centre. It's a lot smaller geographically, and although things are starting to expand outwards, it's still in a phase where properties aren't that expensive in the grand scheme of things, and you can still get a city centre high-rise flat for a really affordable price. There are also lots of major global employers who are opening offices like Booking.com in and around Manchester city centre, which means you have all of this international global money coming in from these big tech companies hiring locals and specialists in the area. Plus there's also billions of pounds of investment going into the city as well, whether that's a pension provider creating these huge build to rent buildings, you could be looking at major employers or the regeneration and investment going into creating brand new areas. We've already seen spinning fields that's been completely recreated and there are loads of more brand new quarters being built every single year at the moment and that's really upping and completely revitalizing old worn down areas. Trains and transport are fantastic, it's two hours direct to London, you have links to Leeds, Liverpool, Sheffield, Derby and Nottingham all from Manchester. And also again they have two fantastic universities which is the University of Manchester and Manchester Metropolitan which means you have this mixture of fantastic big employers with young working professionals and then you've also got a massive student market. So whether you're looking for a family and a buy to let, you might be wanting to find a HMO, serviced accommodation, there are loads of different strategies that could work really well in Manchester and also the greater Manchester surrounding areas. And thirdly is Liverpool on the list. Now Liverpool has had a 6.3% growth year on year and is only 7% above the 2007 peak which is a really important point that I'll touch on. So Liverpool is another fantastic thriving city that is growing year on year but the difference here is that when you look at Nottingham and London they're already 20 to 30% above the 2007 peak which is great because they've had loads of capital growth but when you look at Liverpool it's been a lot slower and typically what you see in the property cycle is that it slowly ripples out and affects it so Manchester's going up and now we're just starting to see Liverpool do the same and recover but because it's only 7% above the 2007 peak it could mean that Liverpool has a long way to go in terms of capital growth so imagine investing in Manchester and you've got another you know, 10% out of that market before a potential crash. Whereas Liverpool might shoot up another 20, 30% to get to the Manchester Nottingham levels before then crashing in another few years time when we have the next property crash. That might not be completely true, but it's something to think about and just be aware of. So in terms of what Liverpool has going for it, it has been a bit of a slower area to recover. There's a lot more deprivation in the area, but it is coming up really slowly and more regeneration projects are being invested into the city and the docks and the surrounding area. And it is a really good place to get a cheap deal. There are lots of big employers there, you've got loads of big universities and you've got this mixture again of the students and young working professionals which means it's great for a buy to let, it's great for a HMO and you can also balance those two strategies in and around Liverpool. And the last thing to be searching and researching in Liverpool is the regeneration. Now there is a massive massive regeneration project worth over 5.5 billion pounds going into Liverpool and the Docklands area. It's called Liverpool Waters and it's going to comprise of more entertainment areas, massive high-rise kind of tower block flat luxury complexes and it is going to really change the whole area and they're also trying to keep the UNESCO World Heritage status of the dock area as well so you have this mixture of all of these billion pounds of money being pumped in and invested into the city but also you've got the heritage and the culture there as well and the history. I genuinely believe that property around here in Liverpool in the future in five ten years time is going to be at a real premium and you'll see flats in Liverpool and around that area selling for really really high prices so it's a good time to look at Liverpool and get in now before it gets too expensive and before that year-on-year -year growth becomes really big and everyone else clocks onto the growth in the Liverpool area so I feel like at the moment we're a little bit ahead of the times and Liverpool is kind of not quite had its boom yet but it is going to happen soon. Second to last is Leeds it's 5.8% up year on year and it's around 18 to 19% above the 2007 peak so the city has already recovered but one thing that's really interesting and that I am kind of keeping a key eye on Leeds for is that it's a massive financial centre it's the biggest financial centre in the UK outside of London but again similar to Liverpool I think Leeds is behind the curve and it's not quite gone on to that huge explosive phase just yet 
Meaning if you get in now, then you've got a better opportunity of seeing some really strong, fantastic capital growth because Leeds traditionally over the past few years has been a lot more flatter. It's always kind of grown year on year, but it's been more in the middle of the table rather than the top half of the table. It's got loads of fantastic regeneration, including a three million pound project to completely revamp the train station. There's a 270 million pound regeneration of the west end of the city called Lisbon Square. And this whole regeneration project is going to double the size of the city center area. It's absolutely incredible what they're trying to do. So have a research and Google what that's all about. And last but not least is Sheffield, which is my hometown, which is up 4.7% year on year and around 17% above the 2007 crash. So again, Sheffield, another great city that's already recovered past the post-recession and the property crash of 2008. Now, I think Sheffield is an absolute gem because I think it's behind a lot of the other cities. And again, it's always been quite modestly in the middle of the tables. It's growing slowly, but it hasn't experienced the big booms that Nottingham and Manchester and Liverpool are starting to see and going through, which means that I think Sheffield is going to kind of sit modestly for another two, three, four years. And then at some point, we're going to see a massive growth in Sheffield. It's expanding as a city. There's loads of regeneration going into it. And I think property prices will really start to go up, especially because in a post virus world, it's right next to the Peak District and people love outdoor spaces. You can pick up a great terrace, semi detached or detached house for a really affordable price, sometimes under 100K, depending on where in Sheffield you're looking to buy. But there's also the premium luxury side of Sheffield as well. So if you look to the west of Sheffield, close to the Peak District, around Around places like Ranmore and Fullwood, you will see multi-million pound homes being sold there on a weekly basis. So there's really good potential in Sheffield. I feel it's a bit of an unfair advantage for me because it's still quite modest now. It's also my home area, so I know it really well. I've got family and friends to call upon if I need them to go and check something quickly at a property in the area. So it's a really great place for me and I think it's positioned really well in the market as well. And they have this regeneration project called the Heart of the City. Now they've already completed the Heart of the City 1, which was a massive project that created something called the Peace Gardens and a lovely kind of restaurant bar area in the center of the city and they've just been approved for heart of the city 2 which is a 470 million pound project to again further regenerate and invest into the city center area with planning proposals for over one and a half million square feet of redevelopment this is a really incredible project and it's also going to create between 5,000 to 7,000 more jobs in the city when you combine this with other major employers coming into the area like hsbc who have just opened a massive digital cybersecurity office. There is a lot going for Sheffield at the moment and I feel like not a lot of people are looking at it just yet. There's also the brand new advanced manufacturing research slash retail park where they've had big employers like McLaren move in with a brand new manufacturing facility. Rolls Royce have also put in a new plant right next door as well to them. And this is all in partnership with the University of Sheffield and their advanced manufacturing research facilities. And the incredible thing is when you drive into Sheffield along one of the main roads called the Parkway, you can see on the left hand side Side, there are massive like two and a half three thousand home new developments going on in and around Sheffield so it really is a thriving place to be and a growing city to wrap all of this up these five areas I think are going to be really strong in 2021 it doesn't mean that they're the only areas and it also doesn't mean that you can buy a property in these five areas and it will work you still need to do your homework do your research and trust your numbers and make sure that you're running the correct costs to understand whether a profit is going to give you profit or not so you still could make a bad decision in a good area. If you liked this video, I've got loads of other great ones like this one on the top here, which is my day in the life of a property investor. And you can watch me go and view properties and try and find a good deal. Or like this one on the bottom, which is me speaking to estate agents for 25 minutes, where you can be a fly on the wall and see what it takes to get viewing and get information from an estate agent. So feel free to choose one of these and I'll see you on the other side.